Hey everybody, welcome to Azumi Game Dev Devlog Week One. This is the beginning of the weekly devlogs. <clears throat> Pardon my uh my professional voiceover right now. I just got back from the gym. Fucking tired. I think I went a little too hard. But whatever. So today is the first day of weekly updates. Now that DevTover is Dev Over. So we are going to be going through changes that have been made throughout the week. If you're a member of the exclusive patron discord, you might see some of this stuff in advance because it kind of comes as it happens. Let's kind of finish it. And uh, the first thing you guys get to see in my weekly dev vlog is my incredibly messy desktop. Uh, there's lots, lots, of, lots of icons that I haven't gotten rid of yet. I usually use my second display for uh, capture. But it's not hooked up right now, so uh, you get to see uh, 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 the, the disgusting conditions in which I operate. Uh, yeah, fantastic. But, um, so some stuff has changed since the last update. Let me open up Construct here. Uh, I actually had to rebuild almost everything. I, this is an entirely new file. And for some reason, uh, there was a function that I needed. If you double click here, you can create new object types. I needed, oh look, it's not here again. The browser function is gone again. For some, there's supposed to be an object here called browser and it's not here and I don't know why. It's very weird, I don't get it, but uh, sometimes it just doesn't show up. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Uh, maybe I wasted all that time, but I spent like a couple hours porting everything over to a new uh, a new file so I can get the browser event back. Yeah, it was dumb. Uh, that took up a lot of time, but I did do some other stuff. The reason I wanted that is because I made a menu. And the menu is what you launch into when you start the game. So instead of just directly being dropped into everything, now there's a menu screen. And even before that, I have a boot screen. So it kind of does this the t traditional kind of booting up sort of jam that you would see in a regular video game. Then once the boot's finished, it goes to the menu. And then when the menu you can either start the game, which will kick you into the game environment, which everyone's pretty well aware of at this point, or you can exit and then it'll just quit out of the game. So we can watch that right now. Let's do a preview project. So you can see I'm going for the Sega Genesis thing. Just does a little logo splash. I don't know if I'm gonna publish this under Namkai Bando or not. Then we got a uh, work in progress animation to start everything out. There you go. Now you're in the main menu. So I can go up and down here, and if I click on one of these, I can just exit the game game's closed. Or, I can just hit start, and now we're in the game as normal. So we've seen this a million times, nothing really to show here. Uh, so that's kind of the bulk of the progress that was done last week, on top of bug fixes. There's always bug fixes. Uh, things are a lot tighter than they were last week now. Um, a lot of the major bugs I can't say for sure are fixed because I don't know what caused them in the first place, like the the, uh, the invisibility bug and the floating bug. But I've played the game a bunch of times and I haven't run into them. So what I've done in the code, which I don't even know, I'm gonna be able to pull up anything. Let's just go into the dodge state for instance. There's a lot of like, it seems to me are like redundant things, but uh, they're not. So this used to just be on dodge timer finished, but I added or is not running the timer at all. This seems redundant, right? Because like, if the timer's finished, then it's not running. But a lot of the times, a bug would be caused, the timer would finish running, and this command wouldn't run. Uh, so it was just like a weird thing. So I just added instead, uh, when the timer finishes, or if it's not running. So it's kind of just like a fail safe. Like, if the timer finishes, and this doesn't run, here's another condition, when it stops running, do this anyway. So it's like two conditions that basically are the same thing, but it's kind of like a fail safe. And I added some fail safes throughout the code to uh, 
to kind of just make sure it does what I wanted it to do. Um, it's weird. But that is where the game is pretty much at. Uh, I also wanted to talk about, you know, the finished vertical slice. Where that's going to be. What that's going to be about. And just things going forward, right? Because uh, we're kind of in a new chapter now. Uh, Devtober's done. November 8th is come and gone. I put out, you know, a not very publicized, but public release of the game. Uh, how these weekly devlogs are going to work is I'm going to do things like this pretty much as normal. Uh, right, this particular update, not a huge amount to talk about, but I wanted to lay out in the foundation. Uh, so I'll talk about any updates that have happened with the game, uh, any things I might be having trouble with, or new features I'm excited about. Um, as long as there's something worthwhile doing, you know what, regardless, I will have a new build available every week. Um, this will be for patrons. You know, patrons have been able to get preview builds all the time. So if you're a patron, you're going to get weekly dev builds until the final release of the Vertical Slice, which I'm planning to do uh, the end of December or January 1st, you know, around that time, just come out 2019 swinging with a completed Vertical Slice. My plan is to post that publicly first on uh, Web 3.0. So, you know, zero net and dat but also on Newgrounds. Uh, a huge amount of inspiration for this game and the character of Izumi came from my love of like Newgrounds back in the day. Um, so I feel like Newgrounds is a place culturally where this character and this project make a lot of sense. So I wanna put it up on Newgrounds. I think that's like the first place I'm gonna have it publicly facing and publicly available is on Newgrounds. Um, I have an account on Newgrounds, made it, couple weeks ago I will link it in the description if you want to follow it preemptively I don't know what I'll be posting on there I haven't been on Newgrounds in a long time I have like a lot of nostalgia for Newgrounds but the more I think about it Newgrounds continues to be a much smaller and less relevant platform than what it used to be in its heyday when I was a huge fan of it but the culture that's there is very much like the culture that I liked on old YouTube that's gone away. You know, the creative culture, people making things, not just blogging about their lives, uh, uh, do as I say, not as I do right now, but uh, just a culture of creating things. And even though it's small, I think the audience on there will resonate stronger with a project like this than trying to just post it on YouTube. Um, after a while, I'll probably post it up on itch uh, and have a direct download. I wanted to also have this directly on my web server because I have web hosting, uh, but it's totally fucked and it won't let me upload anything. Every time I try an FTP in, I get an error. Um, it's really dumb. So I'm gonna have to like contact Bluehost and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, zero networks, no problem, and it's free. Why am I paying you again? So yeah, that's annoying. But I plan on releasing the full, completed, final thing, which is, again, a little tutorial tunnel, uh, the full, finished little arena you get locked into with final assets, uh, the end of December or January 1st in that ballpark. So that's when that's going to come out. Um, I also would like to have more things. Like, if I finish the game before then, I'm probably going to start working on animations or comics or something else to post on Newgrounds to kind of, like, boost the brand when it all launches, to be like, oh, this is a multimedia character. She's going to be in multiple things. Um, yeah, so going forward, once the vertical slice is out in December, then uh, I want to build, like, an actual game based on this whole... Like, I put a lot of work into it to have a vertical slice and then drop it seems stupid. So I'll probably want to have a couple levels with boss battles and stuff like that. Uh, but that'll be worked on in the background along with other projects, more comic projects, more animation projects. Um, there are four key things I want to learn uh, because I still am very much a baby when it comes to pretty much everything I'm involved in right now. Uh, the, three th the four things that I want to learn basically in this order are 3D mesh modeling, animation, 3D animation, uh, programming and game dev they all kind of stack on top of each other 
you know, I need to know, like, if I want to make games, I got to learn how to program. If I want to program, like, I'm not going to program anything unless I can uh, animate the stuff that would be in the game that I want to program. And if I can't animate it, if I can't model anything. So all these skills kind of build on one another. Uh, so once the vertical slice is done, I'm really going to start, like, reverting back into student mode and really start hammering away on, like, building my essentials and all these skills that are mandatory for making uh, making my stuff. Because I, ideally, I'd like to move away from Construct and back into Godot, uh, which was the engine I started with. It was just I didn't know enough programming to get something like this done in Godot. And if I wanted it done by that November 8th deadline, I knew I had to basically transition to something that was going to be more easy to digest for someone with my skill set, which is why I changed to Construct in the first place. Um, now, I'm not going to lie. Construct is amazing. Like, I love it. You know, I love the workflow. Uh, it's great, but it's... I feel like I'm nowhere close to it now, and I think even for the kind of games I'm making, like side-scrollers, I don't think I'll ever run into any real bottlenecks with Construct. But Construct is not a 3D engine. And the the, 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 the big, big goal is a character-centric 3D PlayStation 2-style action game, which is not buildable in this engine. So unless, like, Ashley and the Construct guys, like, magically announced their next release has 3d uh which i'm not expecting i need to move to a different engine and godot is free uh the community seems to be building very quickly i have a little bit of experience with it and i like the workflow uh gd script also seems pretty user friendly once i understand python so i'm i bought a big course on learning python so i'm going to learn python um and that'll help me move back to Godot, and then I'll be able to bring 3D assets into Godot's engine, which hopefully by taking classes on CG Cookie, which I have a membership of, I can get better at doing that and learn how to animate them well. So it's all about like getting the little pieces put together to make this final product. I'd also love to learn uh, music theory and to make music, but that's just not even on the radar right now. Um, there's just a lot, there's just a lot. I really wanna be a one-man show, but it doesn't seem likely. So another thing I was considering, that's one path. That's like the ideal path. That's like becoming the Ubermensch creative man. Another path I was considering was to completely like back burner coding and be like, I'll dick around with coding for fun, but clearly I have a construct license. I'm pretty good with the program. I don't need to learn coding and focus more on the, the 3D animation and the 3D modeling and continue to make animations and motion comics and stuff using those skills to build Izumi as a, a character, as like a brand and build her up on new grounds and beyond and like get people to really like her. And then at some point after I have like a bunch of 2D construct games, animations, motion comics, and she's like a big thing or not a cult following sort of thing, ideally that's where I'd like to be, um, assuming I can get there. At that point, I'd want to use some of the clout I've built up and, like, good reputation. And instead of, like, okay, I'm going to dive into Godot and make this huge big PlayStation 2-style game uh, and try and one-man it and have it take forever, maybe at that point try and build a team, possibly kickstart something. So maybe I can have a programmer who'll probably be way better at programming than me. And maybe I could hire an animator who's way better at animating than me and I can focus on writing the story and doing the modeling. Those are my favorite things anyway. What little I've done of animation, I've not really enjoyed. Um, I, I like the product. Like, I like being able to make things move, but the process... Like, my brain doesn't understand motion very well. Uh, I'm just... It's not intuitive to me. Uh, you know, modeling has been pretty intuitive. Uh, I just need to understand the tools better and really understand the, the, the topology and things like that. And... Uh, Obviously, I've come up with the idea of Zoomy, so like the writing part is good. So if I could just double down and focus on that, and then have a team of people working with me, the game would be done a lot faster. It would take less work of me learning things, and then it would take less time because I'd have multiple people working. So that might be the better idea, um, you know. But I don't know. It really depends on how much like interest and and fanfare I can build up for the character as it stands because if I'm like one two years down the road and I've made like three or four like little 2d Azumi games and a bunch of animations like I would 
hoping I'm going to be able to do. And I'm still only sitting pretty with like a couple hundred people at most who are really interested in her. There's no way I'm going to be able to build the hype or have the clout to have people come work with me on a 3D game. So I'm going to have to do it all myself. But if it's, you know, if I can add a couple zeros on there in one part of that equation, then the options expand exponentially. So ideally, me being the fucking narcissist, arrogant asshole that I am, I would like to do everything because I'm a control freak. But it seems much more plausible to have a team. So if I can get a team, I will do it. If not, it's going to be a long, hard project, but I'm not opposed to making it happen because I really want to see this game become a reality. Uh, the 2D games are going to be fun. They're really good exercises. And I actually... You know, this Even this little thing came out way more fun than I envisioned it would be. But the big ideas, the big, like idea that spawned Izumi as a character in the first place is this 3D action game and I don't want to dilute it down to 2D I want it to be true to the vision that initially it came from so one way or another that is happening so that's all I got for this week I don't know if all of these are going to be as long-winded they'll probably be a lot shorter going forward but uh that's what I got for now let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or concerns or anything like that concerning the plan if you want to get access to the newest build, which has all the bug fixes, it's a lot smoother, it plays better, and you can see all that little animations and menus and stuff. Or if you want to just help me continue to debug the game, uh, feel free to give me a dollar a month on Patreon. That's all it takes. I don't have any tiers. I don't have any rewards right now. It's just everything. It's just everything I give to patrons. Everybody gets no matter how much they donate. So feel free to do that if you'd like to play the game immediately. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next week.